In this tutorial we're going to be looking at sculpting the rock face from our part scene using Woodbox, using some of the techniques we learned in the previous session um, of how to actually sculpt rock faces. Okay, so I've opened the part scene. Now rather than um, exporting out the kind of another making another mesh uh, and then exporting that, we already have in our blocking a reasonably good um, base point for a sculpting mesh. Now Obviously, as previously discussed in blocking, we've kind of re got rid of this top bit because down from part level where the character would be in the game, you're not going to see. Um, however, we kind of modeled in a top section here just so we've got somewhere to put the uh, the um, windmills. However, when we create the retopology mesh for both, we would probably end up leaving out this top section anyway. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to take my rock face and I'm going to scale it up so maybe three times the size and with that selected I'm going to go send to mud box now you could just export as an OBJ that's fine um, you can do exactly whichever method you want if you've got a connection with mud box then the easiest thing is to send to mud box so we'll just send it as a new scene we already have mud box open so we can send no to that Okay, so this is our rock face. We can look at our mesh and we can see that we've got um, our divisions there. I'm going to start dividing this. I'm going to take it up to again about half a million polygons. I'm going to turn the mesh off. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a sculpt layer. Now we're going to be using the foamy as well a little bit in this one. So I'm going to put the foamy over there as well. And just like before, we're going to be using the scrape tool. And let's just uh, reset the scrape tool change our stamp spacing to zero and can start looking at actually kind of scraping out some of this we might want to just change our strength so again we're going to go for a similar sort of thing that we went for before just blocking out where our hard edges are so this will kind of define some of the areas as well that we want to sculpt. Now I'm only going to do a small section of this as it's going to be part of an exercise anyway for you guys to go through. So changing the size of the brush as well, making sure we're kind of getting as much of these hard edges in as possible. I would say for this, we, you don't have to go too extreme because this isn't going to be seen really close up. But things we want to think about. The reason why I brought the front for me brush in is because I want to actually kind of block out some of these sections here to add larger overhangs. Now I could probably actually just use the sculpt tool. Might be a bit easier. Just make sure I turn off that knife. Yeah, sculpt's a little bit easier. So we kind of actually want to build out some rocks as well. Um, we're not going to be using the blocking mesh again later. We're just going to be using it for this section. So I'm just going to use this to block out some rocks and we can get some kind of pillar shapes going on up here. This is going to be really your call on what you decide you want to do with this. All I'm doing is kind of adding extra shapes in here. So what I'm doing is I'm adding them in and I'm just giving them a little smooth. And what I would recommend doing, certainly at this stage, is making sure you're looking at lots of reference for actual rock faces. So we smooth that one out and then we go back to the scrape and we start actually scraping down some of this. Now 
this should just allow you to create some kind of interesting patterns. We might want to zoom in a little bit. Should name our layer. This is just the blocking phase at the moment. So once you're kind of happy with some of the detail you've created, now you're going to want to go back in. Again, remember using your your sculpt brush and using the knife stencil. Oh, stamp even, wherever it's gone. And actually start kind of blocking in some shapes as well and this is by the sea so most of this rock is going to be sedimentary level so it's going to be built up of layers I think what I might have needed to do would be actually go in with a bit more detail I might probably want to divide for my next level top of the rock is probably going to be larger chunks But all down here, I would imagine, will be more built up of layers. So you can actually start blocking those layers out, the sedimentary layers. And I definitely think we need some more resolution on this. Because it's obviously a lot, it's not just like a single cube. So what I think I'll do is I'm going to actually divide this again. We're at 2 million. We'll give that a go. This is going to be blocking 2. That's much better. We're getting much better detail on this. Again, what you're doing is you're letting the kind of shape of the rock guide where the cracks are. And we can also use the inflate or the amplify. Bulge. No. Try wax actually. Wax will probably build up this better. And with wax, what we'll do is go down to the advance tab. We're going to do whole strokes on the on the wax, and that will bring out. or push in, <laughs> as the case may be, and smooth these out a little bit, then we can go back to the scrape,
so eventually you are going to go up to your kind of mid-level detail do to scrape those rocks back there like I said you're not going to see this in much more, much detail and what we're really looking for is we're really going to be looking for the texturing to kind of sell it this is just going to give us that shape and when the sun kind of glances on areas we'll see the rock shape and you're not going to get much look no, it's not going to look great close up but once you start moving back you can start to start, start seeing how the rock is forming okay so just like before though when we're using the script we can use this stamp and we can start to use the randomize we're going, we might need to go up in detail so this is going to be a very long process it's going to take you quite a bit of time start thinking about what you actually want like some grassy areas kind of like onto on these bits here where the in the texture in the grass is going to overhang so you might want, not want to add too much detail to this as where grass will be there'll be soil which will keep it kind of nice and flat but it means you're going to want to kind of add extra geometry up here now we've got all the tools to do this um, we can start using wax sometimes it looks like wax is building down we might want to actually set up a different lighting system as well so we can actually see kind of like the rock a bit more if you're kind of building up with wax with whole strokes on you can start kind of fleshing out larger areas so the whole strokes remember just is actually working with the geometry that's already there And using a combination of both, let's just move this next to for me. And don't forget we've got our build up as well, so we can increase. To the wax tool and turn off the whole stroke if you want to start actually building up wax does build up in layers and if you're not if you don't like it you've always got flatten as well you can come back in and flatten some of these out and again with flat and we can turn on whole stroke and that will actually gives a better result for walking kind a of rock face we'll flatten all these areas out around here so again it's not just using one tool it's using kind of a multitude to kind of get the results you want with the flatten as well we can also add the stamp into the flatten And we can see the effects we're getting here. It's actually better without, but 
we can actually start planning some of this area out so we can start thinking ahead of actually what we want our rock face to look like which is where the concept artwork obviously comes in quite well I would probably want to orient the surface as well so you can see we're sort of building this outcrop here of rocks if you get any areas where If you like, want to fill in, start, just start moving the ones that you're going to be using the most. Start filling in areas if you need to, just to neaten up. Like I said, these ones really aren't going to be seen. But you can see we're starting to build our rock ledge. And as your eye line, even though this is is it this is going to be in the distance your eye line is going to be drawn to this geometry. Keep dividing if you think you need to going to, going to go up in divisions. You can see that we're already starting to block out the shape of a rock face. Yeah, but we have a whole huge area to go here and this will take quite some time. Now work out where you want to go back to and again with our character depending on the scene and you'll be told by an art director exactly kind of where the character will walk and what should be visible past this point you're not going to see much detail yeah so you can keep most of your detail to this front edge here and you'll just keep plowing at it and working out kind of where the best place is to add detail where the best place to add rocks um, then if you created a separate rocks you can pile these around the base which will hide in hide kind of like this harder edge at the base here but using the the wax tool we can just keep on building out that sedimentary area it does seem to be going in at that point Could be my invert functions having issues. Get in quite close to the rock, build stuff up, use use kind of your own artistic judgment of what you want it to look like, and also a cross between that and actually kind of actually how rocks really look. So even just by using the the wax tool, you can see you can start building in shapes. Just kind of go in and out. The smooth's not working particularly well, but we can use fill to fill in any gaps flatten and scrape we're just going to do an all over kind of roughness to this see just by even adding 
this roughness in here. Obviously, I seem to have given up a little bit on the uh, some of the sculpt layers now, but we could actually just kind of even start flowing in here with with that roughness, and you you're already going to get a natural kind of rock shape there. And what we probably need to do is go back into our sculpt. Redraw some of these sedimentary lines. And sometimes it's actually quite good working at a distance because once it starts looking right at the distance you know it's going to look good in the game. And think about where your, your textures are going to be. Think about where the tide mark comes up to on the, on the rock when you do start thinking about your textures. being really light with the brush. You can see you start getting the shape. And the look and feel of the rock pretty quickly. I don't think the lighting was set up quite right in our scene here and obviously it needs a lot more work. But That's kind of going to be where we're going to leave it for here and just keep trying to kind of finish that rock and um, post them to the forums. Your results and obviously when you speak with your kind of personal tutor you can to show your results to your personal tutor as well. But obviously we could send this back to uh, the software as well once we've kind of done with the sculpting just to see actually what the high resolution one looks like back in um, in Maya if we get actually that choice to send back. Some reason I don't seem to be getting the choice. So in the texturing video, what I'll do is make sure in the texturing we're going to be actually sending it back over to me to kind of view.